Alright, it's the uh, somewhat evil, uh, pretty much all evil half of the day. So it's just this, you know, he's just again mischaracterized the previous conversation we've had, the arguments being made in that argument, and it's just such a dishonest portrayal of the argument, and so I just have to do this correction, because he's fundamentally just a lying cunt. <laughs> yeah, that's so. all. As a claim, which can be checked, it can be checked whether this structure is the same as this structure by looking at the nodes and the interconnections. Right, so he's talking about um, how we represent um, understanding, um, pattern recognition. So let's just write that down and deal with that concept. Which should, should, shouldn't we, Hathaday? It's pattern recognition. It's what the brain does. It recognizes similarities. And we call, when we recognize similarities, we call things that fall into the category of having that recognizable aspect. Two-ness, for example. We call that a category. And it now is a property of these things. They have two-ness. The two-ness is a category they go in. They now have the property of two-ness. Get it? Properties become categories. Categories become properties. And this is where, in my dialogue, my long dialogue with Imendum, we reached a point of impasse. Because no, we, we read a point of impasse because you keep changing the goalpost. You concede that nail in the eye, you will agree that there's a cavern of difference between nail in eye and comforting hug, let's say. Um, an almost infinite. The difference could be compared to, <laughs> from a personal experience, the difference between black and white. The difference between a nail in your eye and a fun hug, maybe a little, a nice rubbing hug, a nice fondling hug, yes. So a hug with some fondling and a nail in your eye is as different as black and white. The difference is stark. The difference is obvious. The difference, intelligence, can recognize it. <laughs> yeah. New, do, 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 oh, wrong maps. Where the roots of his philosophy come from the claiming of absolute value. Yeah, it comes from the claim that there's two kinds of ways things are valued by brains. One way is based on a projected value, that is some sort of attachment. I value nicotine because I'm addicted to nicotine. Some people value NASCAR because they're addicted to the soap opera of the backstories and, you know, will Roger win his seventh or whatever the thing is. I like watching golf sometimes. Silly sport. Has no real value but it has value to me because it's aesthetically nice and I like hitting golf balls, I can relate to it, blah, 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 blah. Diamonds, silly little things, no intrinsic value, all projection, values all projection, where furry rabbit with sentient brain that's actively conscious, now there we're talking about something of real value. It's not because something feels as a projection of value. They have synthesized an association between a feeling and the thing. The feeling itself is what has value. So the way we are able to project value is that we make value by feeling. So when I feel better because of nicotine, it's not because the nicotine has value. It's because my sensations have value. And now it makes the nicotine valuable. Get it? 
but the real core thing that has value is the feeling. most he has to offer um, is that intelligence sees it. Yeah. Well, obviously, I don't, I've never made a video where I just say, intelligence sees it, that's it. No further explanation provided. Obviously, I made the point that there's no other way to explain value. It doesn't exist, sentience, doesn't exist in any other form, it doesn't exist in a pen or in a marble it doesn't exist in a thing where you can dissect it and see it you can't see consciousness happening mechanically you can only see it happening to something something that's possessing it and they're having the experience of it but you can't see it any other way but watching something experience it so there's no there's no other way to understand it but to sample it you must consume it you must have it in you to know what it is there's no words you can use to describe it because there's nothing else in the entire universe like it it's not like this marble there's other things that are round there's other things that bounce there's other things that are smooth there's a lot of things that have the features of these things in the world there's only one kind of fire, <laughs> consciousness. And without sampling it, like almost fire, right? There's not, there's not too many things like fire. If you never saw fire, and I wasn't going to allow you to sample fire, fire might be hard to explain to somebody. And consciousness, even more dramatically than fire, because fire you can show it to somebody chemically, you can draw a picture of it, chemically. You can explain the energy dynamics of it. It has properties you can, you can connect to. There's very few important properties of consciousness, sensation, that you can touch at all. You can't draw a picture of it. It has no chemical formula. It's a very complex arrangement in a brain that creates the illusion of it, but it's one hell of illusion, like time. So anyway, just illustrating that when I said intelligence sees it, intelligence recognizes it, what I'm saying is it samples it and it knows it. You can't miss it. The difference between nail and eye and fondling hug is as dramatic as the difference between black and white. Yeah. Now that isn't uh, that isn't a description of a truth. Says you. I'm uh, I'm saying without any doubt whatsoever. I mean, if I go to Bugs Bunny's house, I touch Bugs Bunny. I smell his fur. We have a private conversation. He gives me gold coins. Um, I take some hair samples with me. I mean, how, how deep do I have to go into this to say that if I have this personal experience, you can tell me you don't have evidence, but I'm telling you, I'm experienced it, idiot. I don't need to describe it. I've already experienced it. The fact that you need a description, that you need to somehow have me explain to you how the difference between a nail in your eye and a fondling hug is as vast and huge and gigantic as the difference between the moon and the sun. Or, you know, I can give a million examples of things that are very different. Food and poo. I don't know. Lots of things. Penis and vagina. Just saying intelligence sees it. If it did... Again, does this sound like just saying intelligence sees it? This is exactly the arguments I've made before. You, you can't put consciousness in a bottle. You can't analyze it with a microscope. 
You can only know it by sampling it. There's nothing you can you can't use words, right? That we don't have any any anything else to compare it to. Like marble, you can compare it to big marble, small marble, ball bearing. There's a million little round things you could compare a marble to in describing it. There's nothing I can compare consciousness consciousness to and say it's kind of like that. Show me something I can say it's kind of like that. It's kind of like nothing else in the universe. And once you've tasted it, <laughs> that becomes obvious. That becomes more true than the existence of my skin, and then the existence of anything I say exists. I'm no, I am more certain of the value generating nature of my consciousness than I am of anything else on this, in this universe. It is the most certain thing. It is the thing right here in front of me. It's the silver fucking bullet right through my brain thing. It is so goddamn glaringly, blaringly, loudly saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. My consciousness is the loudest thing of my existence. And you're telling me there's some reason to doubt? Some reason to say, I think it's only a hypothesis that you're conscious, or that your consciousness creates value states. That's only a hypothesis. No, the fact that it creates value states is the most certain thing I know in this fucking universe, you fucking retard. And I'm only having this conversation because you're a preposterously anal, double fucking heliotronic asshole. This is a truth uh, underpinned by logic then it will be better expressible than that. Well, it's a truth underpinned by experience. Again, you cannot, it is the property of feeling that feeling is good and bad. It creates value. It has value as a fucking thing written right on it. This is value. Feelings are intrinsically valuable. They are the assignment of value. There cannot be assignment of value in the universe unless something sentient is experiencing the value of the feeling. <sighs> Fuck. If it is a truth asserted by a simple arbitrary label, Arbitrary label. So again, nail and eye, fondling hug. Arbitrary distinction. <sighs> Can hardly tell the difference. Could possibly be confused. Might not know which one to choose as a holiday. Nail in the eye. Shall I take a two week vacation at nail in the eye or? Fondly hug. Oof, I, I don't know. Maybe I should go get some advice on this decision. It's really, really complicated. <laughs> Fuck you. Then it is simply a, a, a definitional assertion. Yes, a definitional assertion that I said many times before that you can only know by tasting it. You can only know it by tasting it. You can't describe it with vocabulary because there's absolutely nothing to compare consciousness to. If I was to have to explain feelings to something that never had a feeling, it would be impossible to do because there's no way I could explain to it really sucks. It's this horrible, repulsive thing. They don't know what any of those words mean. 
I can't use any common vocabulary because the thing would have no conception of this idea of something that was painful or obnoxious or repulsive because those are only things you can experience if you're conscious. <sighs> arbitrary definition of Again, arbitrary. No, the value is intrinsic fundamental to the function. That's why the function exists, is because it creates value. It creates the distinction between the carrot and the whip. Duh. Just like in the way I can call these pens, I can call these values, <laughs> you know? No, I don't know. Again, you're telling me I shouldn't be able to tell the difference between a pen and a sensation. Sorry. Entirely no sale. I was reviewing some earlier dialogue and noted where Sapolsky talks of... Oh, oh fuck it. Um... <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Again, you know, he he just this, you know he does this with this name dropping stuff. You know, he's, he's, he played a whole big pile of Feynman videos, and then I pointed out how ah, he's wrong there, he's wrong there, he's wrong there. Um, but anyway, he just now he's, he just always does this. I don't know why he does this, but whatever, that's what he does. The argument from my authorities, whatever, fine. Um, the clip he played of Sapowski doesn't prove anything. It's just a bunch of assertions by this Sapowski guy, right? So, what the fuck? Um, I don't have to accept his premises, uh, and I don't. I don't accept your argument that consciousness is fundamentally different than anything else in the universe, and it has the added quality <laughs> of not being like anything else in the universe, and being in impervious to description without sampling. You have to have the vernacular of common understanding. The vernacular created by common experience with sensation. All right, I think that's enough. But there's, you know, like I said, this is where Hothley just demonstrates he would be, it's impossible to have a conversation with him, right? Because this is a ludicrous thing for me to have to argue with another sentient creature. Now, if I was arguing with a computer, you, you know, if this little android was giving me a hard time, you know, what, what are you talking about sensation? What is this bullshit? Well, why is this important? Okay, I can understand. But he's, he knows that it's a fact that he doesn't want a Mack truck shoved up his ass. He knows that. And he knows it would be a negative value experience as a fact, <laughs> okay, if you were to shove a Mack truck up his ass, or every human being's ass on Earth, or every sentient organism's ass on Earth, that it would be bad for all of them. Like I said, no point. No point when people are this deep in denial, this desperate to evade the simple truth that consciousness is what is the only thing in the universe that has or can create anything called a real value. And that the real value is in the experience, not what causes the experience. The sentient experience has the value the action or the event that causes it does not necessarily have any value whatsoever. Obviously, if the event that causes your suffering is somebody else's suffering, that would be double intrinsic value. <laughs> okay, but... Otherwise, it's just projection. And that the only real value is the value of the sentient organism. It's comfort. The comforting of sentient organisms is the only 
good in the universe. Period. <laughs>